Hi everybody and welcome to uh cancel star. Uh sorry, <laughs> never mind. Okay, I guess I Are you making while. sourdough bread or what? <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Debbie Reynolds with Rocky Mountain Lodge and today we're gonna be making homemade sourdough bread. You can tell that it's been a little while since we have done a video. The last time we did a cooking video was in September and then I broke my hand and was in a cast for two months and then had physical therapy and then the holidays. And so it's been a little while, but I'm back again and I'm excited to be showing y'all how to cook today. Um, I love homemade bread and I love sourdough bread. I've been keeping some of my sourdough starters going for several years. Um, I've heard of sourdough starters even um, going for hundreds of years, just keeping them going and going. They're pretty forgiving, and I'll tell you a little bit more about sourdough starter while I'm kneading the bread today. I do two different types of starters. I do a traditional starter, which is this one that we're doing today, and you can see all the bubbles in here. And if you can zoom in on here, and you can see what a ripe sourdough that's ready to use looks like. And then I also have a sweet sourdough starter that I have over here that I use to make sweet rolls and Amish friendship breads and banana breads. But this one doesn't have sugar in it, so it's just a traditional sourdough starter for making breads. And you can see I made some here earlier today. So these are what a couple of finished loaves are gonna look like. I'm gonna work eventually on different scoring techniques to make them pretty on top. Maybe next year I'll do a video about those. But right now we're gonna go ahead and start with our sourdough. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to make your dough. I have a batch here that's been rising that you can see that will work with here. And I'll roll this out here in a little bit after I show you how to make some regular dough. So I'm just gonna cover this up and let that continue to rest. So I have started with some water and yeast that I have been keeping warm on top of my coffee maker. Also, good places to keep things warm are in your microwave with the light on underneath or in your oven with the light on if your kitchen is cold. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a little spatula here. And the temperature difference does help. It does. So I am a really big stickler when I am making yeast breads by weighing my items out. So right here I have water with one teaspoon of yeast. And this is about a half a cup of water. But what I do is I will measure my yeast and my flour and my water in grams. Um, I actually have a kitchen scale here that I like to use. I use this pretty often when I'm cooking. And if you go to my sourdough um, page, uh, recipe page on our website, RockyMountainLodge.com, where you can also find our cookbook, Rocky Mountain Lodge and Cabin's More Favorite Recipes that you can purchase there. I'll tell you more about that at the end. Um, but you can use this scale to weigh out your ingredients so things are pre pretty precise. Yeast doughs can be a little finicky, and so I like to be pretty precise in my measurements. I have a link to Amazon where you can get one of these kitchen scales. They're not very expensive. And you can switch them back from grams to, what do, you, what do we use in America? Like ounces. Well, yes. I wasn't sure if there was another technical term. <laughs> so anyway, so you can switch this back from ounces to grams. I like to use this in grams. I do have measurements on the web, web, website with both ounces, cups, grams, so that way you can be a little flexible. But I like to be pretty precise when I'm making bread. So I need, to start with, I need one and a half cups of lukewarm water or 340 grams. So I've already done some here, and where, is my, where did I put my phone? I measured it out with my phone. Okay. Your phone is right here. No, my other phone. Oh, your other phone. <laughs> I'm using your phone. Yes, I have two phones, a business phone and a personal phone. Okay, so uh, of 340 grams, I've already done some, so I need 214 more grams of lukewarm water. So I'm gonna measure that out right now. You don't want your water too hot. If your water is too hot, it will kill your yeast and then your dough will not rise. 
So you just want to get it to um, where it's nice and warm on your hand, but not burning. And so I have teared my, tear means keeping it even. So I've, this is 200, exactly 214. I just happened to get lucky. So there, now I have in here, I have my one ounce of yeast and I just used regular active yeast. You can also use rapid rise or instant yeast, but pay attention to your timing because you'll want to check your dough sooner. It might rise faster. So I have my water here, hey, and I'm going to take... Tell them, tell them what the tear means. Oh, tear on here, it's T-A-R-E. That brings your scale to zero. So what you can do, like I'll show you that right now. Brian, you can come in here and I'll show you about my sourdough starter. So you can see, and I'm weighing in grams. Let me turn it on. Okay, it's at zero now. So now it's at zero grams. So if I put a bowl on here, you can see it's going to change it. So if I hit the tear button, it's going to bring it back to zero with the bowl. And so now I need to add to this my sourdough. And for my sourdough, I need one cup of sourdough or 227 grams. And like I said, I really like to use grams. And you're going to want to feed your starter um, right after you do this and use it. So I'm going to weigh this out to 227 grams. I can't really see it from my angle. Keep going. You need another scoop plus some. Okay, so we'll see. And you can see on my website, I do have two recipes, one for sourdough starter and one for sourdough bread. About 100. That's 100? A little okay. less. Well, mm. I need 227 grams. So just a partial. Okay, so just tell me when, bit. I'll just pour a little bit, tell me when I... I'll, I'll tell you when. Okay, since I can't... It. Too much? What are we at? 235, 236. Okay, so let me take a scoop a little bit out. Look, it's getting heavier. I know, it kind of changes. Here, let me scoop just a little out. What are we at there? Uh, 116. Oh, 116. Oh, two. Two, 215. Two what is that? 236 again. 236. Okay, I just need to take out a tiny bit. What are we at? 233. Just grab it with your fingers. <laughs> I don't want Get it. a smaller spoon. <laughs> 233. 233. I know. I'm pretty precise. How much do you need? I need 227. 227. All right. There we go. Okay. 228. I'm going to call okay, it good. Close enough. All right. So, and then I would feed this, and I'll tell you a little bit later while I'm kneading the bread about sourdough starter and how to keep it and feed it and all that kind of stuff. But for time's sake, we're going to come back to that. Stick that in there. In the sink. Okay. So now, I'll set this aside. We're done with that for right now. So we want to feed that. Okay. So now we're going to add this to our water and yeast mixture. Now normally bread is just flour, water, salt, yeast. There might be some butter or oil in there. But this is sourdough bread, so we're adding some of our sourdough starter to this. All right, and there's that. Okay, and then we are going to add our flour, which I have sifted my flour ahead of time. Now, I use bread flour. You can use regular uh, all-purpose flour as well. Bread flour has more gluten in it, so it tends to rise better. So I like to use bread flour. So I'll pour this bread flour in, which this is... 602 grams or five cups, roughly five cups. This is not gluten-free bread. No, this is not gluten-free bread. And then we want two and a half teaspoons of salt. And that's all the ingredients we have for this. Now, this can be a little bit difficult to stir and mix by hand. I have a bread machine and I like to just put my dough and all of my ingredients in my bread machine and just set it on the dough setting and let it rise in here and then I do the rest by hand. Or you can even knead it in a stand mixer with a dough hook if you have that. Because but, it's got to have power. Yes, but right now we're going to use this for our power. Okay. And so this is a dough whisk. So it makes it mixing your dough, especially heavy sticky doughs, much easier. And I also have a link to this dough whisk on my sourdough recipe. And it's cheaper than a mixer. It is a lot cheaper than a mixer. This will cost you about $10. So 
So, so I'm just going to mix this dough here. Because some people don't have a bread machine either. I know. I have a lot of things probably that I really could do without. You're doing it old school. Yes, but I'm doing it old school just so that I can show everybody how to do it the manual way because a lot of times that's what people will have. Does, does your activity watch have a baking uh, activity? <laughs> it doesn't. Losers. I actually tend, I notice that on days when I'm in the kitchen cooking a lot, it doesn't even register very many steps because I'm just kind of standing here and moving here closely. All right, so we've got this roughly mixed here. All right, so I'm going to, I always like to keep a bowl of flour just to be able to dip my hands in uh, when it's nice and convenient. So I'm just gonna get the rest of this dough off of this dough whisk. What about your fingernails? Oh yeah, I got my fingernails done before we went on vacation last month. I'm trying to keep them up and they get a little gooey. They're turning into tools again. I know. The gal that did my nails, since I don't normally ever get my nails done, told me that she could tell I use my fingernails as tools. And so she said, now that I've got my nails done, she said, they are jewels, not tools. So, but I still use them as tools. I would be scolded if I went in. I would, I would use them as tools. So now we're going to knead our dough. And so the way you knead your dough is you just bring it in, you bring it up. Okay. So to knead our dough, you just bring it up and with your fingertips and you press it down with the palm of your hands. And then you can flip it around and do this a few times. So while I am kneading our dough, the reason we need our dough is because we want to get that gluten, the proteins from the flour will produce gluten. Well, they have gluten in them, but we want to combine them with the water so that they're going to rise. On a molecular level. Yes. Alton Brown, I am not, but he's the science guy of food on the Food Network channel. So we learn a lot watching him. And I will tell you a few things now that I'm gonna work this dough. So I'm just gonna knead this for about five or 10 minutes. And while I'm kneading this, I'm gonna tell you some other stuff about doughs and yeast and sourdough. So the biggest thing about yeast spreads is yeast is pretty finicky. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. A few things that you wanna do is you wanna make sure your yeast is fresh. If you have old, old yeast, your dough won't rise. If your water temperature is too hot, your dough won't rise. If you don't knead your dough enough and get the glutens worked in, your dough won't rise. Now, I don't know much about gluten-free breads because I don't make it. I do have a sister that has celiac disease, and so she's always wanting me to make gluten-free stuff for the holidays, which we did a bunch this year. Not breads, but our appetizers and desserts, I was able to do a lot of gluten-free stuff. So while we're working this, I'll tell you a little bit about sourdough starter. So you wanna make your sourdough starter, if you don't have any, about a week before. And I do have a recipe for sourdough starter on my website that you can find out, that you can go to and get your sourdough starter ready. And then you can make your bread. So sourdough starter takes several days. You start with only two ingredients, flour and water. You wanna use rye flour or whole wheat flour to start it and then as you start feeding it, then you can add just all-purpose flour to use later on. You getting a workout? I know, yes. It is a little bit of a workout, but it's good exercise, right? And, okay. and we live at 7,500 feet. Yes, we do live a little bit high altitude. And here's another thing about high altitude. When you're making yeast breads at high altitude, you want to use a little bit less yeast and oftentimes your dough will rise faster. So you'll want to check on your dough more often. Um, like if it tells you to let it rise for 90 minutes, check it after about 75 minutes and it might be ready. And there's less atmospheric pressure at this altitude than sea level. That's why it poofs faster like a bag of potato chips. Yes, if you've never been at high altitude and get a bag of potato chips, it's pretty impressive. All right, so on the first day when you make sourdough starter, you're just gonna mix your flour and your water, and the amounts are on my website. 
And then day two, you're going to end up discarding about half of it. I do have the amounts in weights and grams on my website. And then this, so you'll discard about half and you'll feed it about the same amount again. So this is becoming, the, and you need this, and here's how long you know to need it. You're going to need it until it becomes, until it will bounce back. Like you can see that's bouncing back. So it's looking pretty good. It's almost ready. So I'm just going to need it a few more times while I finish telling you about the sourdough starter. And then we will move on. All right, so day two on your sourdough, you feed it about the same, you, uh, the, you're going to feed it about, yeah. So you can see how it gets nice and bubbly. So you're going to feed it. And then days three through five, you're going to start feeding it twice a day. Uh, once in the morning, once in the evening, just about 12 hours apart. Um, and then on day six, it should be ready to use. If not, just feed it one more time and use it the next day. Will it look like that after about six days? It should look like that after about five days. If it doesn't look like that, give it another day and it should start go, um, looking like that by day six. But the big key is days three, four, and five, you want to feed it twice a day. All right, so. And it should start smelling like sourdough. Right, it sh and then the longer you keep it, the, the more it will ferment. Now, if you're not going to be using your sourdough starter every day, you can keep it on the counter if you're using it every day. If you're not using it every day, you can keep it in the refrigerator and it will go dormant. And then you just want to take it out a, day or a few days before you want to use it, feed it, and then it will be ready again. All right, so now that our dough has been kneaded and it's, it bounce, it's bouncy back, we're going to put it in a bowl that I have just kind of sprayed with some nonstick cooking spray. I'm going to put the top part down so that it gets some oil on it. And then I'm going to flip it. And now I'm going to cover it up with a towel, just a kitchen towel. And I'm going to put it in a warm place. And if your kitchen is cold, my kitchen tends to be cold. So you can, I either put it over here on the stove top underneath my microwave with the light on. We're going to let this rise until it's about doubled in size. It takes about an hour and a half or check it after 75 minutes. You can also put it in your microwave with the light on underneath or in your oven just with the light on. Don't turn your oven on or your microwave on though. Okay, very important. Don't cheat it. <laughs> All right, so now I have some bread or some dough here that has been rising Ooh, yeah, it's still for going, about isn't... an hour and a half. So it's risen up, gotten quite big. And like I said, I'm using, do this one in my bread machine just to keep it simple I just throw everything in here and turn it on my dough setting and then it's done so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on here and I would do this right on my granite but my granite temperature is cold it's only about 65 degrees and it's good to have your dough temperature at about 75 or your your temperature about 70 or higher so let's see if I can get this out sometimes it doesn't want to just come out so I'll have to use my hands and kind of just scoop it away from the edges. And now try to flip it out. Come on, there we go. Okay. Be sure there. to take the hooks out. <laughs> That's important. All right. So we're done with that. So now we have our dough. And this is why I like to have a bowl of flour close by. So now I'm gonna make two loaves of bread. I just got these new fun things called Bannetons. They are rattan baskets for proofing. You do not bake in these, you just proof in these, which means you let your dough rise. And then when you, this is only my third time using these. So today with this dough, I used them for these. So they get these little artisan ridges around it. Like I said, I have to work on my scoring techniques and getting some ears on my dough. If you don't know what ears are, they are where the edges where they can kind of come up. They call them ears. So these are my rattan cooking uh, banneton baskets. They're just for proofing so my dough is nice and tender and airy and soft. And so for these banneton baskets, you want to flour them with rice flour. And the reason why we use rice flour instead of all-purpose flour is because rice flour doesn't have gluten in them and it will help to not stick. 
This is kind of like the next level though. This is. Now you don't have to do this. You can just put them in any old bowl like I've done those bowls. Actually, I've done the bowls to rise. And then if you don't have that, just take your bread, bread pans and just put this in bread pans. Or if you want to shape them into round or oblong loaves, you can just put them on a cookie sheet. Do you have to flour or grease your bread pans? Um, I usually do grease my bread, bread pans, yes. And so any other questions that you have, guys, feel free to ask any questions that you might have. So this is just rice flour that I am dusting my bannetons with, which, um, you can, like I said, you can just use loaf pans. So this is after our first rise. So now I have this bread here, and I am just going to cut this in half because I'm going to make two loaves. You can make just one giant loaf. You can. It's going to take longer to cook. We've done that before, and it was ginormous. Yeah. So we would cut a slice, and we'd go, oh, we have to split this slice. So for these, I just there's a lot of air bubbles in this, so I'm just going to work it just a little bit. I don't want to totally deflate it. I want it to stay nice and tender. So I'm just going to work this a little bit just to get some of those air bubbles out and form this into a log that I can put in my oval bread basket, or you can just put these in regular bread pans, or you can just put them on a cookie sheet on your stove. So in the Bannington oh. baskets, because it has these, somebody have a question? So, no, but you don't even need a bread pan. You don't even need a bread pan. You can okay. just put them right on the cookie sheet. So what I'm gonna do is, now this one is shaped into an oval, so I'm gonna put the nice side down and I have a little bit of air bubble, so I'm just going to pop those bubbles out. And so the reason why we work it a little bit now is so that we don't have all those big air bubbles in our bread when we cook it. Being at high altitude, I probably could have done this a little sooner. So it might have risen a little longer. But anyway, so now I've got this nice oval right here that I'm going to put into my bread basket right here, my proofing basket. So there's one that I'm just going to set there. You can see that one. And then this one I'm just going to form into a round. And again, I want to try to work it just a little bit to get out some of those air bubbles. So Let's I'm just kind of... Show them the air bubbles, which you're You can see an about. air bubble right here. See how it gets those air bubbles. Ooh, squeaks. Yes. So I just want to work out some of those bubbles or you're going to have more bubbles in your bread, air pockets in our bread. So I'm just working this just a little bit. But if and they like big air pockets, you there can do you go. that. Yes. All right. So I'm just going to make this now into a ball. Form this into a little round ball here. And then I'm going to put this into the banneton right here. So we have two different types of breads. Okay. So now what I would normally do, but I'm not going to do it today just for time's sake is I would normally just set these aside and let these rise for about an hour, high altitude, sometimes a little bit less. You check them after about 45 minutes until they've doubled in size. And so once they've doubled in size, you would flip them out onto either your cookie sheet, if they're in the vanity basket. If you just have them in a loaf pan, you're just gonna go ahead and slice them and bake them. Or if they're in a cookie sheet, What's you that thing called? This is called a bread cloche. C-L-O-U-C-H-E. And I probably might be pronouncing it wrong. But this is it's like a, a stoneware bread baker. It's a cloche. Cloche. <laughs> but it's just a stoneware baker. And then it has a lid. Now you can do, if you have something like this, a Dutch oven also works great. A cast iron Dutch oven will work great for the same type of cooking. They also make cast iron... Um, bread and potato pans that you can buy, but they're pretty pricey. Um, this was kind of pricey too, but um, I like using it. And then, so I'm going to do two different ones. This is how I did these earlier today. Um, after these have risen, I would flip them out into both of these. And then I take, let me wipe my hands here, this little knife. You can actually, let me wash my hands. They're all sticky or dry with bread flour. Um, you can do a couple of different things. You can either use a razor blade, a serrated knife, 
or what's called a lame or a lame. This is my new tool that I just got along with these. I got this little thing. All it is is a razor blade with a handle. Um, it's spelled L-A-M-E. I think it's pronounced lame. I just call it a lame because it's easier. Um, to slice your breads and to get these little slices on here. So what you would do is you would flip it out into, into your pans or on your cookie sheet, or if it's in your bread pan, it's already ready. Why can't you use a regular knife? You can. But you can it's use, not as sharp. It, it won't give you a good line. It's not as sharp. If you are going to use something, use a good serrated edge knife. Use something with serrated edges. But there are little bits of techniques, and I'm still working on mine. Um, you can use... I'm working on my techniques with these. Um, you don't want to cut straight down and in. You will kind of want to cut across at an angle like this. So I'll cut this now and then I'll let it rise just to show you what you would do after you flip it out into your pan. But I don't have another set of bread dough ready for that or else I would have had to make eight loaves of bread today and I just didn't want to make another one. So you're going to end up just kind of cutting. So what I did here, I just went across like this and you're gonna kinda of cut at an angle with the corner of your knife or your serrated knife, and you're just gonna go across like this. And then it will make a seam, and then as it bakes, it will come up. So I'm not gonna do that right now. And this one, I just went across. But this is where you can also do like fancy designs and leaves and patterns and flowers and all kinds of cutesy stuff. And so then you put them in here, you do this, and then you would end up covering this or you put them in the oven, covered at 450 degrees for 20 minutes. Then you take your lid off and you let them continue to bake at another 450 degrees for another 20 minutes. And then they end up being like this. You can hear the crunchy outside of this bread here. And then the inside should be tender and chewy. Now I'm just gonna set these aside into in my microwave. I'm going to set these in my, actually I've got stuff in my microwave already. So I'm just going to set these here to rise for about an hour. But because I'm at high altitude, I'll check them in about 45 minutes. And then I'll put them in here, I'll slice them, and then I'll put them in the oven to bake. But for time's sake, I'm just showing you what the finished product is like. And that's about it. That's how you make sourdough bread. Tell them about failures. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I have had lots of failures. So don't worry. If you fail, just keep trying. The biggest reason for failure is yeast. You have to have fresh yeast. Make sure your yeast is fresh. And you also have, and here's a way tip to keep your yeast. I will buy this yeast and I keep it in my refrigerator. And then I take it out, like the night before I want to make bread, I take it out to let it come to room temperature. But I keep it in my refrigerator because it'll last longer that way. And then if your water is too hot when you're adding your yeast, that will kill your yeast also. Don't be afraid to fail. No, and let me show you one thing here. Last night, I made bread because I wanted to try out my new Bannetons. And so I made a couple loaves of bread last night to try out my Bannetons before today. And I used a different yeast that was probably old. And my bread did not rise put very it, much. Put it, to the, put it to the other one. See, so you can see the difference between <clears throat> last night's rise and rise this morning with new yeast. I went to the store and got new yeast. So I ended up throwing out this yeast. I mean, we ate it anyways. It's not like it's not good bread. It's just a little bit heavier and denser. And more dense, more chewy. A little bit more chewy this one more will, dense. This, this one will be less. much better. Yes. And so I'll cut into <clears> one of these so that you can see it. I'll cut this one. Oh, and here's another thing that we use too. Another tool that we use. This is just our infrared thermometer that we like to use for checking temperatures for meats and surfaces and not meats, yeah. internal. You have to do internal for meats. But um, I will use this to check the temperature of my doughs. Um, like I said, things like to be at least 70 degrees. Um, my yeast on the counter right now is 76 because I had it warming in the microwave. And so just this, sitting in the microwave with the light correct, on. Correct. Right. Just in, this one, my, my sweet sourdough, has just been on the counter here. That one's 69 degrees. Yeah. 
So the microwave or under a light or in the oven with the light on makes about a five, six, seven mm -hmm. degree difference. Yep. And so that's how I like to warm my my doughs. I keep them in the microwave or in the oven with the light on with the temperature off. All right. And so I'll cut into this so you can see what it's like. Any questions? No. Okay. So you can hear the crunch. That's what you want, a nice crunchy outside, and then the inside will be chewy. Oh, yeah, look at the difference from your old loaf. Yes. Where's your old loaf? Yeah. So, oldies. Rising. Yes. Not so good. So chewy. don't be afraid to fail. I was a little concerned last night that I was going to have a bad day today, but I just went to the store and bought new yeast. Way more yummy. <laughs> Mm, tasty okay. but chewy we had it last night with dinner brian made homemade smoked ribs last night and so we had smoked ribs macaroni salad and this so sourdough bread not so bad so just just try it practice it if at first you don't succeed try and try again make sure to comment in the comments button ask questions if you have any questions Visit our website at RockyMountainLodge.com. Click on the gift shop tab and you can purchase this cookbook. Um, we have 500 recipes in our cookbook. And if you enter our promo code, Facebook Cooking, you'll get $5 off. And right. come back next week and uh, we will be making, the next couple of weeks, I'm going to make some appetizers for parties. So... Super Bowl's coming up here in a few weeks, so I'm going to make some appetizers for Super Bowl. I put out a poll yesterday on Facebook if I should make jalapeno poppers or buffalo wings. Um, jalapeno poppers have edged out buffalo wings by just a little bit, so next week we'll make jalapeno poppers, but in two weeks we'll make buffalo wings. So come on back, um, purchase a cookbook, and... Go ahead and try some sourdough bread and start your sourdough starter five to seven days in advance before you make your dough. And then you can make dough pretty much every day after that. And it's been nice to have you guys back again. I've missed cooking with you all. Uh, the broken hand didn't stop me from cooking. It just wasn't very pretty. She couldn't clean anything. Oh, that was, that was really actually kind of an added bonus. <laughs> So anyways, I'll see you guys next week when we make jalapeno poppers. Have a great day. Comment, like this video, share this video, and I'll see you guys next week. Don't, Bye, everybody. Don't be afraid to fail. You're stuck at home anyway. <laughs> Just keep doing it. All right. Enjoy that bread. Bye. Bye.